So today we are reviewing and discussing the 2019 book, Child Free by Choice, The Movement Redefining Family and Creating a New Age of Independence by Dr. Amy Blackstone. And wow, is that title a whole ass mouthful. <laughs> no kids for me, thanks. As always, I'm going to read y'all some excerpts that I thought were interesting or noteworthy while I was reading the book, and hopefully that will give y'all a good view of the book's writing style and tone, and then after that we will talk about my overall general feelings about the book and whether I recommend it or not. So let's get in to the excerpts. This first excerpt comes from the intro section, and this excerpt refers to a blog post that Amy Blackstone made when her and her husband decided that they were not going to have children and were going to live a child-free life. One relative, not yet a mother herself, but soon would be, shared this reaction on Facebook. LOL, an entire blog just to talk about how you don't want kids? What's the point? <sighs> And that is something that I have heard myself, plenty of other child-free content creators, I'm sure, get that comment. Oh, I ho, blah, 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 just to talk about being, not having kids, being child-free, blah, 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 blah. I even mentioned this in um, this week's earlier video about International Child Free Day, how people will say, oh, a whole such and such to talk about how you don't want kids. They just get so hard-pressed about it. People are, people are just so dense and so willfully ignorant about the fact that it's just, it's about community and representation and finding like-minded people. It's really not that difficult to understand. And yet again, I will scream from the rooftops until the cows come home. Child-free Child people deserve community. Get over it. Okay, so this next one also comes from the intro, but I just had to bring this up because it was funny. Though, in the words of public relations executive Adriana Beva Lacroix, probably butchered that, the majority of marketing talks to adult women like they are all moms or want to be mothers which is so true and I thought that one was funny because I know a lot of y'all will let me know in the comments what kind of ads you get that play on my videos and y'all have made the observation that a lot of the time it is something kid, baby, parent related and it's just funny because I think what it is is because child or parent or whatever is in my title or thumbnail the algorithm doesn't understand that I am talking about those things um, in a we don't want that negative perspective. Um, the algorithm just sees the word and <laughs> thinks, Let, child, let's advertise diapers. Um, and I think it's ironic. I love the irony that advertisers are paying money to have like a Pampers ad played on a child-free video because I make money from that. The channel makes money from that. Um, and then we get to donate some of that money. It's just the irony for me. Love it. <laughs> it seems children became priceless at the very moment that they lost their economic value. And I love that this book brought this up because um, I believe that Selfish, Shallow, Self-Absorbed, another book that I did a review for on this channel, also brought up the fact that children have not always been thought of in our society as they're thought of now. Once children cannot contribute to the finances of a family through helping out on a farm or working in an industrial setting, the whole reasoning behind why to have them at all had to change from necessity to emotional reasons. Now people have children to fulfill some sort of emotional need, whereas 200 years ago, people were having children literally so they had enough people to make work on their farm. And the reasons that people have for having children today have not been the motivations for that long in, in terms of all of human history. It's a blip. It, it's annoying. Moving on. Child-free people, those who have made the explicit and intentional choice not to have kids, are not incomplete and they're not missing out, at least not any more than any person who chooses not to do something they have no interest in doing. 
And first of all, I have to point out that this book does a very good job, in my opinion, of signifying the difference between childless and child free and acknowledging that there are differences and being careful um, with the wording throughout the book and being clear who the book is addressing, which I appreciated because I cannot stand when people conflate childless and child free interchangeably. It drives me crazy. To the um, not missing out, at least not any more than any person who chooses not to do something they have no interest in doing. I have no interest in sports, okay? I'm not, I'm not a sporty gal, okay? So I am not going to go join like a, a female softball team or a female basketball team or something like that. And I can say to y'all with 100% certainty that I am never going to regret not being on the softball team or the baseball team or the basketball team or the soccer team. I'm never going to regret not doing that because I just have zero interest in playing the sports. It's the same thing. It's the same thought process. I have no interest in doing it. Therefore, I'm not going to do it. And because it's never interested me, why the f would I ever regret it? It's really not that hard. No one comes up to me and is like, oh, you're gonna die alone and miserable because you never played on the women's softball team. But I have been told those things and way worse over choosing not to be children. And like, why would you want someone who has zero, if, if not negative desire to be a parent? Like I have, I have less than a desire. You know what I mean? I, ha I have, I have less than no desire to be a parent, yet still people are trying to tell me, well, you just need to do it anyway. It's your duty. The only duty here is the duty coming out of your mouth, Susan. Though my reasons for not having kids look remarkably similar to my reasons for not having a dog, no one has ever told me I'll regret my choice not to get a dog. And that is so incredibly true. People will absolutely grill you about getting a dog. And like when you go to adopt a dog from certain places, you have to go through extensive steps to adopt said dog, fill out a lot of paperwork, have like home checks and inspections of where you live to make sure you can take care of this animal. And that's all well and good because people get animals all the time that they have no business having, that they can't actually care for because they got in way deeper than they ever thought they would be, right? And that's not good because animals deserve to be taken care of. But then when people decide to have a baby, a human, a human, a human person, no one bats a f***ing eye and it's like not even socially okay to be like, hmm, are you sure? Are we sure this is a good idea? Like, because if you ask that, it's, oh, how dare you? But then if someone wants a pet, you can ask them a million and one questions and that's fine. But if they want to make a human, you can't question it at all. It just, it doesn't, it. <sighs> math ain't mathin', right? Numerous other studies also find that the child-free hold less traditional gender beliefs than parents. And that rings true for me and Shelton, my husband. Obviously, the, the most, the easiest example of this would be, I have a buzz cut, I have no hair. It infuriates the men folk sometimes, it's hilarious. And Shelton puts the man in manicure. And I think it's very fun. He has really taken to painting his nails over the last few months, maybe year now even, I don't know. But he has gotten so good at it. And as a ex nail technician, y'all know, y'all know I love, I love nails. So that brings my soul happiness that he has now found joy in also doing nails. It makes me happy. Our town has lots of great activities and most of them are called some variation of family fun day. So does that exclude me? It usually does because it's geared for children, not for my family. And that raises a question we might all consider. Do family fun days and family friendly environments really mean fun and friendly for all families or only for those that include children? Of course, I'm not suggesting that there's anything wrong with events that cater to families with children, but call them what they are, kid friendly events, not family friendly events. 
Continued use of the term family friendly in this limited context only reifies the idea that families without children are not really families. Y'all, don't even get me started on how annoying I find this family friendly term. <laughs> because that excerpt is completely right. Family friendly never means friendly for all types and variations of family. Family friendly always signifies friendly for kids and it's horseshit. Like I, I really don't even have anything else to add to that excerpt other than yes, 100% agree. Call it what it is. Just use the correct language. Like It's 2023. We all know that families come in all shapes, sizes, configurations, whatever. Stop calling it family friendly when you actually mean kid friendly. Call it what it is. We all know what you mean anyway, you know? No, we don't all hate kids, but neither should we have to justify our choice not to have them with lengthy proclamations about how much we adore them. Yes, 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 yes. A thousand times yes, absolutely agree. <laughs> Regardless of where you fall, on your feelings towards children, your feelings towards interacting with them, whatever. Regardless of where you are on that, you do not have to ever justify your child-free choice. And honestly, justifying it can be harmful. It implies that it is something that is wrong. It's something that needs justification because if there is no justification, there's something fishy going on. And there isn't anything fishy going on. We're not doing anything wrong. We're just simply making the reproductive choice, the lifestyle choice, the overall choice that is best for our lives. All right, this last one I literally annotated with just clap emojis. <laughs> Not everyone is cut out for parenthood. There's no shame in that. Despite the pervasiveness of cultural messages suggesting otherwise, parenthood is not the key to a fulfilling life for everyone. Even parents need something more than parenthood to be fulfilled. And for some of us, parenthood isn't a part of the equation for fulfillment at all. Everyone has their own personal idea of fulfillment and, and no two people are going to find fulfillment in the exact same way. What fulfills me may not fulfill you and what fulfills you may not fulfill me. People should not expect that parenthood and raising children, all the things, would be a one size fits all, all encompassing, all fulfilling situation for every single human on planet Earth. It's, it just boggles my mind how closed minded of an idea that is. Now let's move on to my overall thoughts about this book. What I did not like about this book, let's start with that so we can end on a positive note. So what I didn't like about this book, my main grievance with this book is how much Dr. Blackstone talked about parents in a book titled Child Free by Choice. <laughs> like I get it. I understand that, you know, parents fit into this conversation, especially when we're comparing and contrasting views and lifestyles and all of the things. Like I get it, right? I get it. But it felt at times as though the perspective that we were getting had shifted from the child-free perspective to a parent perspective. And when that happened, I was like, can we please just get back to a more child-free perspective, please? Like, that's what I'm here to read. That's what I'm here for. Like, I get what you're saying, but this is a child-free by choice book. Can we please just leave it at that? I don't know. That was just me though, but I will say she did always bring the perspective back to the child-free side, so I'm just an impatient reader, and I know this about myself, so that might have been part of my problem, and I acknowledge that. Um, also, because of my impatience, some of the book seemed to just drag on. Um, Dr. Amy Blackstone is a sociologist, and she did use a lot of studies in this book. There was a lot of studies statistical information, percentages, um, percentages as I call them. Essentially what I'm trying to say is when the book started sounding really academic, I got bored 
it's just not my personal favorite writing style. Yet again, it's just preference. I can't blame the book for that, but it wasn't my favorite. And there were points when it got super academic that I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like skim you to get the idea. Let's move on to more like the interview stuff, the anecdotes, the story part. I'm there for a good story. I love it. Things I liked about the book. Um, she incorporated interview snippets, incorporated personal anecdotes really well. It wasn't super long. I will say that. It didn't take me a super long time to get through this book. Um, she was never overly wordy. Um, she made very intelligent points. Like I said, she did use a lot of studies and drew from that, but also used those studies to, to flesh out ideas and stuff like that. The book brings up many different aspects of child-free life from finding fulfillment to aging as a child-free person and I thought that was very interesting. And then she sums everything in the book up really nicely in the last chapter of the book which I thought was a very nice way to end the book and just like refresh on everything you just went through because it's a lot. It's a lot of information and stuff being thrown at you in a very short amount of time really. So overall I would recommend this book to child-free people. There was nothing in this book that I remember reading that I was like, ooh, no, hate that she said that, can't stand that. Nothing like that stood out to me. There was a ton of other excerpts that I found really good and enjoyable that I just didn't share with y'all for, for video time reasons. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out this book if you're interested. I will leave a link to grab your own copy in the description of this video below. I have a whole playlist right here of other child-free book reviews that I've done on this channel. If you are interested, go check those out next. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. I would very much appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, whenever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.